So I'm going to talk now about actually dividing this landscape we've created into management units. So we're going to talk about subdivision and then the fencing that goes along with subdivision. So we've gone through the layers of design of a site, beginning with the water and then access, followed by vegetation. And now we're going to look at the land management units that have been created in this process. So to start with, we've got the boundary of our entire site. And I'm going to sort of make up an arbitrary but idealized boundary line. Ideally, this boundary line is along the ridges, so we have a complete hydrologic unit to manage. So you can see we've got the main ridge here, and we come down. We didn't quite hit the ridge. We came through the riparian area, and here we came through the valley up to the ridge. So that's the arbitrary uh, boundary that I've drawn here. But now within our property boundary, we have all of these other units that have been created by the ridges, by the riparian areas, and by the roadways. And so these corridors of movement and channels of water flow have created management units with similar conditions throughout. So I'm going to illustrate some of our management units, and then we'll talk about them. So I've gone ahead and created some sample management units just to give you an example of what the concept is. So if you look at this area right in here, if this entire slope is facing south, then between the valley bottom and the ridge and the road and the road, we have this block right here. The entire thing is facing east. This block right here between the valley bottom and the ridge, the road, and the road. This entire block right here is facing southwest. This entire block right here is facing east. This entire block right here is facing south-southwest. This entire block right here is facing east. And this entire block right here is facing south. So each one of these management areas has a similar degree of slope and a similar solar aspect with somewhat of a consistent slope. So a lot of the management practices in each of these areas, when you're going to water, how much water, what type of crops are going to grow there, those are all consistent within management blocks that are divided by ridges, valleys, uh, and then the roads. And then up from this irrigation area, um, then we enter the forestry zone, and the forestry zone as well, I didn't put roads in here, but you could certainly have access ways if you're going to manage these forestry systems, um, going up the drainage, down the ridge, drainage to ridge, ridge to drainage, drainage to ridge, ridge to drainage, drainage to ridge. So each of these blocks here have a similar degree of slope for the most part over them, a similar solar orientation, which means that they would have similar management. So what I've created here with this matrix are what we call primary land units. And each primary land unit, like I said, is a management unit. Now, what types of crops, agricultural, horticultural practices happen within these land units? Now, that's completely up to the grower, right? But let's say that you're doing silvopasture and you are grazing animals, say sheep or goats, up in this forested area, and you're going to rot rotate them around the site. You could have permanent boundary fencing along the outside of the site, and each one of these paddocks, uh, you could have portable electric fencing and move them between areas in a calculated rotation around the whole site. That same kind of system could happen within these lower areas. You could have permanent fencing along the roadways, yet you could have portable electric fencing that allowed you to move animals on rotation with crops in these lower areas. Right? With permanent fencing of the primary land units, then the roadway and its associated trees becomes another land unit. Right? The road itself there with the trees along it that roadway there that's its own land unit separate from these fenced areas could also be an area that was foraged by grazing animals. Now, you can alternate animals, crops to help cycle fertility. 
You can grow annual crops in the irrigated areas. You can do more extensive forestry, grow grapes. The possibilities are endless depending on the climate, the soils, and the interests and expertise of the farmer. These are all details that are worked out within the main frame of primary land units. The details of gardening and horticulture will be covered in other segments of this course, but for now, you've got a good start in this overview of designing the basic infrastructure on larger landscapes. So enjoy, and I'll talk to you again in the next presentation.